Hi, welcome to a special edition of Family Matters. I'm Chloe Leary, the Executive Director of the Winston Prouty Center, and we are celebrating our 50th year in 2019. As part of that celebration, we wanna share stories of people whose lives have been impacted by the Prouty Center as we celebrate and think about the next 50 years. So uh, we will be sharing stories and talking with many people over the course of 2019. And we are very pleased today to be able to talk with a mom, Marion, who is here to talk with us about services and supports that she got through our community-based services at Winston Prouty. So um, why don't we just start actually with you saying a little bit about who you are and how you came to even be involved with Winston Prouty. Yeah, um, so I'm Marion Major and um, I had my daughter Hazel two years ago in May um, and yeah, and uh, we kind of fell into your lap with, um, with an, a referral for mm -hmm. a lactation consultant mm -hmm. um, and I had no idea what that meant if I needed it, anything mm -hmm. about it. I just, you know, had a baby. <laughs> so, I, you know, the, the, the context of everything wasn't really there, but um, our daughter wasn't really gaining weight properly. Mm -hmm. She was having trouble latching. Um, she was also jaundiced, mm -hmm. so sleeping a lot. Uh, so we decided to call the lactation consultant, mm -hmm. Sally. Um, and that's, that's how I got connected with you. That's, that's how it started. So the, um, when you, it's all, I'm always curious when you said, I, I didn't even really know what I needed. How did the initial, who gave you the initial information to contact us? Do you remember? Yes, Dawn. At the hospital? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, it was at the hospital and I, she, she latched all right, but, mm -hmm. but they were kind of like, mm, you know, mm -hmm. just take this referral just in case. And if anything, call her, she's uh -huh. great. And so that, that, was, that was it. So that was the connection, yeah. at least. Yeah, it was straight from the hospital. And so what did Sally do? Like how, so you call Sally, what happens? So she was amazing and is a hero to so many people <laughs> I know. <laughs> and so she came to my house, uh, which is, was at the time at the top of basically the pinnacle in Westminster West. Oh we were gosh. in a little <laughs> cabin. Uh -huh. um, and she came to our house and I think I was, what, three or four days postpartum. Uh -huh. um, and so she came right in and she uh, took Hazel's weight and then we nursed and we kind of figured out how much she was transferring, how much milk she was actually getting. Uh -huh. okay. um, and then we talked about how we can make it better, how she can get mm -hmm. more. And at the time, because she hadn't been feeding as often because she was jaundiced and um, because she was have, having trouble latching on um, one side, she she wasn't gaining enough, mm -hmm. and also it's a supply and demand thing. Mm. So I wasn't supplying enough at that point. Uh -huh. So we would have to, we we talked about it a lot, and uh, it was a process getting there. But um, we ended up doing herbal supplements, which mm -hmm. at first I was kind of like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe real? in that. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's so real. Uh -huh. It's so real. Oh, so, what were they? What were they? Um, Mother's milk tea to begin uh -huh. with, which is just like immediate. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Um, and then there's some pills. Uh, Shadavari. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think I'm saying it wrong. I don't remember. Gaia. Uh, there's a few different mm -hmm. supplements, mm -hmm. and they're pretty amazing mm -hmm. and really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. But also, I would, um, and I did this for six weeks, I'm pretty sure. I would feed, um, and then I would pump, and then I would take whatever I produced during the pumping yep. and feed her that through a, a tiny syringe and a tiny tube taped to my finger oh my and gosh. then and then she would suckle on that so it was like kind of like the same yes thing yeah but it's exhausting how I must have taken so much time it took it was, it was everything like that's all you did it was everything <laughs> I did I mean I wasn't battling with like isolation or any mm -hmm. sort of postpartum depression but I didn't leave the house very much because yeah. yeah, like, I had yeah. to have my pump with me. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was like, yes. I was chained to it. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, it was huge. So Sally did, like she essentially shared those resources with you? Yeah, she brought, she got me a pump to begin okay. with. I yes. didn't have one. That's amazing. Uh, and she came to the house multiple times mm -hmm. to do the weighing and checking in mm -hmm. um, and figuring out how she's doing with latching and so mm -hmm. on. So. Mm -hmm. It took it took a 
yeah, I don't remember how many visits, mm -hmm. but she came to our house a few times. <laughs> so that's such a, um, you know, I think it's such a vulnerable time. Is Hazel your first daughter? Yeah. First, first child? Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's such a... Uh, I don't know how you felt, but I was sort of amazed when they let me take a kid home from the hospital. I was like, really? <laughs> You're gonna let do? me bring this little yeah. person home? <laughs> um, and so I'm curious how, and so to have somebody come into your home at this really vulnerable time, what were some of the things that um, you felt like worked in that or made it um, successful for you? I just remember the feeling of kind of complete insufficiency you know in the middle of the night this mm. baby is just bawling mm -hmm. and not latching mm -hmm. and it's so frustrating but it's also so heartbreaking to think I'm not making enough for this yes. child that's mm -hmm. like my function right now mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and then to have someone who's so capable and knows exactly what's going on mm -hmm. uh, to, to come to me rather than we we had to go to the hospital like the day after we came home instead of like the couple days after that you normally do the check-in mm -hmm. and it was just like we we're so exhausted mm -hmm. it was like dangerous to drive it was just really right. good to have her be able to come to us mm -hmm. that's crucial mm -hmm. um, and then after the first visit, after she gave me some tips, I just felt like <laughs> my husband said I was nursing, and he's just like, "You look radiant, <laughs> so sweet." Because oh but gosh. then I felt like, "Yeah, now I know how to feed my baby. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know what mm -hmm. to do now." Um, but it, of course, the journey didn't end after the first visit. But that no, was a beautiful right. first step. Well, and I'm struck by um, right the, you know. I, and I've heard Sally say this, maybe she said it to you, when a baby is born, a parent is also born, mm -hmm. and sort of figuring out that relationship and how that's going to work, and I think there's some assumptions in our culture that you just know what to do, like right. anybody can have a kid, yeah. so you're just going to know what to do, and having somebody help you f build that confidence and competence is so crucial, and yet how what resources are out there, and yeah. I'm curious, you know, like if you hadn't had um, uh, it, it, I think when we're so desperate to, to like, I need to feed my baby, like any, anybody, come on in. Um, but if yeah. you hadn't had that challenge, I wonder um, if, uh, you know, how, how do we get that, comp that sort of confidence building when, like having some, a nurse come in, for instance, yeah. like a home visit, like uh, we're, we're not likely to invite people into our homes or likely yeah. to invite people into conversation about the challenges we're having as parents because we're supposed to have it. Do you right. know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah. And luckily, you know, my family is, you know, close and close by mm -hmm. and everyone breastfed. So I, I had been around that. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really helpful. But having that actual like registered nurse mm -hmm. perspective mm -hmm. was just incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, home visiting is one of the, uh, and actually it gets talked, it, it's on the radar now at the state level and certainly the federal level talking about how do we give our kids and families the best start possible with home visiting services from yeah. nurses or from folks who uh, do family support or whatever yeah. it is a family might need at, at any given time. Um, how do we do that? And that's sort of, you know, part of that whole, Sally's part of a team. Yeah. So it's, which I think is also great that <laughs> if you had needed something else, like, yeah. wow, we're about to get evicted from our home, you know, that could have been part of it too. That whole wraparound service, yeah. I think, is really mm -hmm. um, something that people are really talking about. And it's great to hear that you felt like that was a For big sure. part of your success. Yeah. You know, one of the um, things we talk about at Prouty is, and this is going to sound cliche, but the importance of relationship, like everything is about relationship yeah. and in terms of how we connect, well, e even internally, but with, with the kids we work with, with the families we work with, with each other. Were there things that you felt like Sally brought to, uh, when you think about how to, and you have to develop a relationship quickly, like that's again, really vulnerable, like, oh yeah, okay, we're weighing your baby, let me yeah. see your breastfeed, like, Sir, yeah, yeah, it's way up in your business, yeah. very, very fast. <laughs> right, <laughs> that was a really good way to say that. <laughs> what, were there things that, um, what, again, what worked for you around that? Like, did you notice Sally able to do things that put you at ease or, um, I don't know, like that, that relationship building piece? Yeah, um, she's so calming mm. as a person, she's just very steady. Um, it's not like a masseuse who talks like, 
you know, <laughs> it makes you feel kind of like Ugh. nothing against masseuses. Yeah, nothing against, <laughs> oh my gosh, no way. But just like a different context, mm -hmm. uh, just like very straightforward and just supportive and calming in that mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. um, that was, I think that was it for mm -hmm. me. I also had a friend who had had a kid two years beforehand and had also oh, had okay. Sally uh -huh. help her out. So uh -huh. I was like, I'm, this is good, this is fine. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's interesting, that um, sort of uh, referral, or yeah. where, like you knew somebody else who had, um, yeah, and that we do hear that sometimes, like, oh, you have to call Sally, you know? <laughs> and it's not even All about, the time. yeah, it's, um, which is great to have sort of that resource in the community and people share that knowledge with mm -hmm. one another. Do you, I'm curious, um, one of the things we think about in terms of, again, knowing that support for families comes from all different places, whether it's a professional or a nurse like Sally or, um, you know, or from peers or, are, do you, as you've gone through two years now of parenting, what are some things that have worked besides Sally? What are some elements that sort of help support your family and help you feel like you have what you need to yeah. keep going? Yeah. Um, well, our network within our family and friends is really strong, um, but besides that, ha there's a new mom's network through the mm -hmm. hospital mm -hmm. and now through you guys administer yeah. it. Now, yeah. <laughs> it's Sally great. is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, having that as a resource, not only to be able to go to those groups mm -hmm. as a new mom, whether it's your 12th kid or your first kid, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. um, with a newborn, that's amazing just to be able to get out of the house for a reason, not mm -hmm. just like, I wanna go to Brattleboro, mm -hmm. but I don't know what to do there, mm -hmm. I just need to get out. So having that group as somewhere to go to is fantastic, but also um, there's a Facebook page that mm -hmm. is frequented all, like, all hours of the day. People are asking questions and there's just so many, so much knowledge mm -hmm. in that group. Mm -hmm. So having that, being tapped into that mm -hmm. is really helpful. So like the collective wisdom of yeah. sort of the community. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you, I think another thing that happens for parents um, and families is there's so much information out there. Yeah. And like it, it's an onslaught. So it's great on the one hand that there's a, like everybody has all this wisdom, yeah. but how, <laughs> and I, what I, you know, I think we see happen sometimes is how do you know what to do? Which thing is gonna, mm -hmm. you know, you try five different things. I don't yeah. know if you have any thoughts about, <laughs> again, <laughs> um, what worked for you or how you sorted through some of that information. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's people that take a lot of comfort in researching and getting a lot of opinions mm -hmm. and a lot of knowledge. And then there's some people who just kind of like follow their gut. Mm -hmm. I kind of go in between more towards the gut uh -huh. reaction. Um, I find that the information overload can lead to anxiety or, or a feeling of like, I, I don't know, I'm not meeting these standards or, or something right. like that. Mm -hmm. And that's just not, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Every kid is different. Every mm -hmm. mom is different. Every situation is different. So mm -hmm. having any sort of standard rules, mm -hmm. it's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Yes. Balance. Great. Um, we're going to take a short break for a public service announcement and we'll be right back. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Learning begins the moment your child is born. Baby, baby, baby. Do you want to play too? Every child is filled with vast potential for success in life. <laughs> <laughs> and those first three years can have the greatest impact on your child's learning. Apple, look, where's the strawberries at? Yes, that's lemon too, and kiwi. Wow, awesome job. It's all about giving a child a proper start. That's what being a parent is all about. Yay, we didn't like that song. I wanted to make sure that I was here every day. Such a joy. Every parent of every background can make a positive difference in their child's life. It's peeling. Boom. A few simple, everyday activities can make a big difference. And those are flowers. 
That's why Boston Basics is working with research and community leaders to promote an important new initiative. The Boston Basics are five simple principles that we want everyone to know. The first of the Boston Basics is to maximize love and manage stress. The second is to talk, sing, and point. Let's take a bath, a lovely, lovely bath. The third is to count, group, and compare. One, two, three. The fourth is to encourage and enable movement and space and play. And the fifth is to read, but not just to read. We want to read and discuss stories. Whoa, what is that? Duck. What does the duck sound like? These are the five fun and simple things that every parent can do beginning from birth. Oh, yes. Let's all work together to make sure our children can become the best, most well prepared they can possibly be. Maximize love. And manage stress. Talk, sing, and point. Count, group, y compare. Explore through movement and play. Read and discuss stories. Please join us and help spread the word. And we're back. We are talking with Marion Major about the support she received from the Prouty Center from community-based services, our maternal child health nurse, Sally Pennington, who does home visiting, prenatal and postpartum to make sure that families get the start that they need. So we're back with Marion. Thank you for sharing your story so much. It's no fun problem. to talk with you. <laughs> um, we were just talking about how we sort through information. Like there's so much information for parents and, um, and, and how to uh, figure out what path to follow and, and that Professionals like Sally can help, friends can help, family can help. Um, and I'm wondering if um, you think about sort of the, where you are now. So, you know, Sally was there postpartum and now Hazel's two. Um, almost. Almost two. <laughs> so what's she doing now? Hazel? Yeah. Oh man, she is a tornado. <laughs> I mean, she's a, she's a toddler, but not like a not not like too crazy of a toddler. Uh -huh. uh, but she started walking at nine months, so she's oh <laughs> very proficient at that. She's uh -huh. running around. She is she's a climber, so all of oh our chairs goodness. are knocked over on its side, uh -huh. so she doesn't climb up onto them. Um, but she's talking and. Yeah. you know, starting to sing little songs. Oh, <laughs> that's so, so sweet. <laughs> and so she's, uh, she kept all her weight on, like she's a healthy development that yeah. way. And yeah. You were just saying um, before the break that figuring it, there isn't necessarily a right answer. That anybody, you know, that in a, this realm yeah. of knowledge, there's so much information that we have to find our own right answer about what's yeah. going to work for us. And, um, you know, I think that that, there are sort of not standards there's you know like what's typical development what's atypical mm -hmm. development this mm -hmm. is my kit and you know i think part of our approach at proudy in terms of being relationship based is understanding that all parents you know two fundamental things we want to make sure they're doing well as a parent and they're the, that their child is healthy and happy sort yeah. of those that those are the right things mm -hmm. and how what that how that is right for you yeah. so um i think you know against using resources to sort through that information and figure out you know what where to go with it is really important and it keeps changing so that's sort of why i asked like what she, so <laughs> yeah. now she's two and she's a tornado and you know it's sort of what are some of the sort of developmental things you think what are some of your challenges now like so breastfeeding was like here's this thing you have to eat and you know it's sort of like a system that you figured out yeah and then it gets a little more complicated so what are some <laughs> of those challenges that um yeah. Um, Maybe aren't as pressing as the breastfeeding, right, but yeah, or you know, I don't know. Well, so generally she's very easygoing and a lovely baby, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> everybody <laughs> is. Right. Um, but you know, she is a she is a toddler, so then she has random temper tantrums and or 
just d doesn't listen to, you know, no, uh -huh. don't do that uh -huh, right. kind of deal. Like, you're going to fall off the top of that chair. Don't do that. Right. She doesn't and care. She goes, no. <laughs> I'm going to be fine. <laughs> so trying to figure out how to how to figure that out. Yeah. I, like I how to help yet. her explore, but keep her safe. Yeah. But, and yeah. how to communicate with. Do you, you know, so you were describing, I'm just going to circle back around to all the work that, you, like you had to, you had to stay close to your pump and you did this for, I think you said six weeks yeah. of this pretty intensive feeding yeah. and, and then it, and then it worked. Yeah. And it, so you sort of launched and, and that was, uh, um, sort of a good thing. Yeah. What, um, <laughs> and then I, I think like that, that was a lot of commitment to that. Can, I'm thinking about judgment and how Sally held and supported you. And can you imagine, like, what if you decided, I can't do this anymore with the pumping? Oh, yeah. Would, do you, did, did you feel like your decisions and your choices, um, even though Sally, you know, you sort of present, talked about how comp, confident she is, mm -hmm. um, did, you, did you also feel agency in that process, I think, of like, what if you'd said, I can't do it? Would mm -hmm. that have been okay? I mean. Um, yeah, I've thought about this a lot and breastfeeding has been the biggest challenge mm -hmm. of my life which is not I'm not saying that lightly and I think it's um, incredible that you know breastfeeding is just it's just assumed to be this natural it is right. natural it's not easy <laughs> and that's not communicated enough or like mm -hmm. hardly at all mm -hmm. so um, and then with some people it's just not possible and mm -hmm. that's okay mm -hmm. but it's it's a it is a challenging journey mm -hmm. um, and yeah I I hate pumping I hated pumping mm -hmm. and going back to work one of the biggest challenges was having to do sh shut everything down three times a day oh my gosh sit down for a half an hour and pump and that would just like bring me right back to that feeling of like I'm not doing it or uh -huh, just like uh -huh. this terrible feeling yeah um so it's not like giving up would have been easy or better but I could definitely see mm -hmm. how I would want to not pump anymore yeah and um yeah I, I think I just uh because of all the examples I'd had in my life of women who breastfeed and I know I knew that I was making progress mm -hmm, I mm -hmm, guess is mm -hmm. the biggest thing okay. I knew that I was making progress and I knew that uh, my supply was increasing and I was going yep. to be able to do this uh -huh. um, that really helped if if it was still going on a downhill trend you know we, we definitely would yeah. have talked about formula or yep. we taught my um, our pediatrician mentioned it mm -hmm. uh, in the first few days, you know, it's mm -hmm. not getting enough. We should mm -hmm. talk about formula feeding mm -hmm. or, um, mm -hmm. you know, all these different options. And at that point, I was like, no, of course not. Uh -huh. Breastfeeding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it's okay. Uh -huh. Baby baby fed one way or another is a good thing. Right. Having the baby fed. Yeah. I love what you just said about, um, you know, again, this in the same way that we think, well, you're a parent, you'll know what to do. We, we have this ideal of like what's motherhood and breastfeeding and that, you know, how it's going to be in a picture in our head of how it's going to be. And when it's not that way, how, you know, what, what helps us get through that. And so having that again, support and other voices and friends and professionals who can be reassuring about, mm -hmm. uh, um, that it's all different and it's your sort of your decision and your choice. And, however you want to you know move through that is yeah. the most important and thing. just be able and and having that guidance for you know this is how you you can move forward and this is how you can move a different direction mm -hmm. you know and, and and being really real realistic about mm -hmm. about the capabilities or or the mm -hmm. supply or, or whatever mm -hmm. cool. so right so since you saw success that was yeah. sort of, that inspired you to keep going yeah. through it all but yeah it's interesting that's not always the case no right and uh, and it's interesting, like, to hear you say, like, to go back to work and then how quickly you're right back at that, that feeling of like, oh my gosh, I'm not, like, there's this, there's so much to do. So that's so great that you were able to persevere. You seem so, you know, it's like, it's very inspiring to hear you talk about, like, <laughs> it was hard and I did it. And, um, yeah, that's just, that's really nice. Yeah. So, yeah. um, one final question I have for you is, um, or sort of topic to explore is, are there, when you think about sort of being pregnant and getting ready to have a family here and then having a baby, uh, 
and you think of what's in our community, we do have a lot of resources. Was there anything missing or anything you wished had been there or things you've heard other people have had access to that mm -hmm. you think our community could be thinking about in terms of supporting um, families with pregnant families and families with young children? Interesting. I think the biggest thing that I've been thinking about lately, of course, because we deal with it every day, is child care affordability is uh -huh. just such an incredible challenge. Mm -hmm and insurmountable in some cases. Um, yes. So that's just, I hope that we can figure that out. Me too. We're yeah. working really hard on yeah. that. <laughs> like, I, there's no easy answer. Yeah. So does Hazel have care now? What are you doing now? She does. Uh, we're lucky uh, that my husband's mother has a daycare, so uh -huh. she goes there. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. And right, again, back to that, like, at, at each stage of development, there's going to be something new to worry about, and so they're different. Like, yeah, it keeps being there are new challenges. So, <laughs> um, and you know, I wonder, do you feel like uh, I still hear that you're still very present to that initial, like to breastfeeding and that initial challenge mm -hmm. as time passes? Does it is it sort of still really alive in you, or is it sort of is it fading at all? That memory, you know, how people say, yeah. by the time you're ready for your second kid, you won't remember how hard the birth was the first time, or you forget yeah. about the sleepless nights. I mean, people have these <laughs> narratives. I have not <laughs> forgotten about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I hope not. I want to keep it all as yeah. present as possible and as fresh. I have a diary for, you know, Hazel's development and I literally started writing and I didn't even get through labor. So <laughs> just, uh, best so. laid plans, yeah. no judgment. <laughs> so I don't have a lot, you know, written down. So I hope that I can keep it yeah. all as alive as yeah. possible because it's all so rich. Yeah. It's amazing. It. It's one of my favorite things. Being yeah. Here, so. Marion, thank you so much for sharing your story. It's been great to talk to you. Too. <laughs> thank you.